Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue our deep dive into the standard template library and looking at the algorithm library specifically and looking at sample, which is a new algorithm that was added in C++ 17. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at our favorite website, CPB reference here. And we're going to go to the algorithms library. I'm going to scroll us down past the non-modifying sequence operators, which we've covered many of them and go ahead to the modifying sequence operations. And if we go ahead and search around here just for a little bit here, we'll eventually find sample. There it is with C++ 17. And the basic idea with this one is it's going to select n random elements from a sequence and basically populate some other container. So that's where the modification comes from, the actual container where it's going to select things from and then insert them somewhere else. Okay, so that's the modification. So let's go ahead and take a look at sample here. Now, when I was looking at this uh, standard sample here, I actually haven't used this uh, too much in my programming. I've used things like this before. But what's interesting is we've covered iterators here on this uh, particular YouTube channel here, but I haven't talked about population iterator or sample iterator here. So these were kind of interesting, a little bit perplexing, but worth knowing that they exist. So if you give that a search into Google, you'll find something like this, which I think is um, you know from a section in the uh, C++ standard from the library section, uh, talking about the algorithms library and mutating sequence operations and sample itself here, it says, well, we have a population iterator. So that basically means that it satisfies an input iterator requirement. So that means I can read in values or stream them in or, or basically look through a collection of elements. And I've got my sample iterator here, which is another part of this which means it satisfies the output iterator criteria. So that means I can use something like a back inserter to write into it, okay? So I'll show that. You're gonna get a bunch of uh, errors if you follow along directly, because I wanna show you what these mistakes are. Um, but we'll go ahead and see a little reminder that we need this output iterator here, okay? Um, and then it also says, let's see, our sample iterator shall uh, satisfy the additional requirements of a random access iterator unless population iterator satisfies the additional requirements of a forward iterator. So again, basically, these are just ways meaning that uh, as far as the sample works is if I've got a collection here, and let me go ahead and draw here. Like, let's just say I have a vector uh, with like one, two, nine, and seven, something like that. I need to be able to sample these equally, okay? Uh, so if I think about, you know, I've sampled here and then here, then if I call the sample again, I should be, you know, uh, ideally looking at everything once before I look at something else again. So it's pretty uniform as I understand it. We'll run it a bunch of times, uh, maybe see if this is uh, somewhat uniform. And this is also um, change based off of, you know, maybe our, um, well, what, what's this thing here? URBG. Uh, well, that's basically our uh, random number generator here, okay? Uh, so where we're going to be generating our randomness from. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So again, basically, we're going to select n elements from the sequence. That's the uh, distance here. Again, another parameter for this function. Uh, when we write out the function, it'll look a little bit more clear here. And then we pass in two iterators. So, you know, from some range. So that's the other kind of neat thing here. If I draw for a moment, I mean, let's say I've got this uh, vector here. I can, again, specify my iterators uh, as follows, you know, to just look at this range here. OK, and then sample from that. So you don't have to sample from the whole collection. So again, if you're, uh, say, in a game or something, have a bunch of, uh, I don't know, units or something, whether they're good guys or enemies or AI or whatever. Uh, and then maybe I just want to look at, you know, some, you know, set here. Or maybe if these are sorted, maybe based off a of distance or something, you only want to sample from, you know, ones that are nearby and give them some work to do. Okay, just to put an application into this uh, sample here. Uh, so, anyways, that's the idea. And then, um, and then we'll write out the data here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Now we've got um, again a little bit more just on those population iterators. If folks are interested in that, maybe we can look a little bit more, see if there's other interesting iterators. I think if we dive into like the random and maybe some of the more numeric packages, maybe we'll find more of those types of iterators. Uh, I'll have to uh, take a look here. Um, uh, and the last thing I'll say is that fun uh, URBG, that's a uniform random bit generator, okay? Um, which again, um, some of these random number generator things, these things that came in C++11 uh, to really give some more uh, ways to generate randomness, uh, the Mershon twister engine we're going to see, and then this random uh, device here, which is basically just a way to get a uniform uh, distribution of numbers. Okay, so it's sort of this... Um, 
you know, uh, it could could be like a pseudo random number enter, uh, number generator. Uh, that that's the idea here. Okay, but it gives us some good enough, you know, uniform distribution of integers. Okay, uh, which roughly gives us for the sample thing, um, you know, that things will be sampled uh, equally. Now, complexity, of course, is related to uh, our uh, whatever we're sampling from. So that's going to be linear, right? We want to look through everything. OK, and then again, we return the copy out. So anyways, not much to this uh, sample here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and play around with this. I'm going to go ahead and use vector uh, just so it's something different uh, from what's on there. And let's use um, an int here. And let's say we just have like units or something or AI uh, bots. Uh, I don't know, something like that in a game. Maybe we have like handles to their IDs. This doesn't have to be in order either. Uh, you know, you can have like negative two or something here. Uh, and we want to sort of sample from them. Again, maybe this is sorted in some meaningful way. Maybe it's not, or maybe it's just a collection where you want to. Again, if you're doing statistics, right, just select from uh, things uniformly. So let's go ahead and use a uh, sample here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my iterator here uh, for my AI bots from the beginning to the end. Let's look through all of them. Uh, oops, AI. Uh, bots here. I'm going to separate this out uh, just so we can see the next. Uh, this is how many samples I want. Let's sample three things here. Um, oops, and uh, I missed an argument here. Um, and let's, you know, we need to be able to write this out somewhere. Now we can play around with this for a little bit. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use a uh, vector as well uh, that we'll write out to. Uh, and there we go. And then we need our random number generator. Now this one I got to type out carefully here. Again, using that uh, Mershon uh, Twister uh, engine here. Uh, and then we initialize the random engine here. I'm going to highlight that carefully just so I don't make a mistake here. Mershon Twister 19937. Uh, that must be like a specific uh, standard or algorithm there. Uh, random device. No, oh, I'm losing my editor, but curly braces. Uh, so I'm initializing this uh, thing here uh, and then closing off my Marshawn Twister and then closing off my function here. OK, uh, so we'll go ahead and save that and then we'll go ahead and write out our samples here. OK, so let's just do, you know, something simple like this here uh, and then from our oops, not our out bots, but our uh, output set here. OK, I'm going to go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and see if it uh, works here. Uh, it might be a little uh, gotcha moment here. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's set it up here. And just so you can see here, again, you need to use at least C++ uh, 17 for this. And again, um, I'll go ahead and compile and run this if it runs. Uh, okay, not running here. So what's the problem here? Again, let's decipher some of these errors. Maybe you caught it if you've seen my iterator series here. As always, uh, scroll towards the top here. Uh, we're getting a bunch of uh, errors here. And eventually it's saying, OK, error, no type named iterator category instruct. Uh, this iterator traits here, uh, something for the sampling category. <clears throat> OK, um, so anytime you get one of those errors here, sampling category, I mean, that's giving you a little bit of a hint here. Uh, you know, so you can kind of see it again in the sea of error messages, <laughs> what's actually going on here. Uh, and then if I move out of the way here, um, let's see here. It says no. Um, and we're not really getting a great hint here, actually, where this uh, error is. Uh, let me see if I can scroll up a little bit. I mean, you can look at the sample and, and probably find it here. Uh, but again, just trying to give you a little bit of a hint. You know, sometimes these template things are, are hard to find again. But that'll at least give you a hint that, yeah, it has to do with this third argument, the thing that was with the, the sampler. Um, and again, some of you might have caught it. But again, we're writing out here. We haven't done this too much, but we have a back inserter. OK, so that's basically an iterator that's doing uh, for all intents and purposes for a vector, a pushback. OK, so let's fix that. That's the only error I intended to make. Let's see if I made some more. Um, let's go ahead. There we go. So it does compile now. That's wonderful. And let's see, did we get a, a sampling of numbers? One, seven, and negative two. OK, seems pretty good. And if I run this a couple of times, uh, we don't need to recompile it uh, every time. But uh, yeah, we are getting some you know, different numbers. And they seem to be, you know, a reasonable enough uh, distribution here. OK, uh, so not too bad there. That's nice for a sample here. Uh, now, again, let's just play around with this a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and do some wonky things here. Like, let's try to sample 19 times here from this collection. OK, so we'll recompile and rebuild this. Uh, well, there's not 19 samples, so I get five. OK, <laughs> so I was just going to uh, terminate here. OK, so just something to be aware of on the behavior there. So let's go back to like three is reasonable here. 
Uh, and then let's just again, uh, just to show, uh, if I just do the beginning of, you know, AI bots plus three here, let's just sample, uh, let's just sample two things, um, right? That should take me from my beginning iterator and then uh, one, two, and three. So I shouldn't see negative two here if I've done the, uh, you know, my math properly. I'm doing two samples and, you know, may I have to run this a bunch of times, but I'm seeing one, three, seven. Let's see here if we ever get a six here. Uh, oh, I guess I am just doing from beginning plus three here. Okay, so the very start. Uh, so I guess I'll never see um, six either. Okay, so just the first three elements just to uh, clear that up. All right, to increment this again, then maybe we'll start seeing some sixes. There we go. Okay, just so again you can see, you can uh, you know sample from a few uh, things here. Now let's go ahead and just change the game a little bit here. Let's just use a list here. Um, Let's go ahead and include list. I'll get rid of string. I wasn't going to do string anyway. Um, and let's see. I mean, do we have a back inserter for out? Can I, you know, write out to a different uh, data structure? Uh, and of course I can. Okay. And so that's kind of the cool thing. And again, another powerful thing about the standard temple library that I think is neat here. Because what you might be doing is sampling from something... Um, like a vector, or again, you have nice contiguous access. And then, you know, as you're taking those samples, maybe pushing them into some other data structure, like a list or maybe a heap or something uh, that you want to do something interesting with. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, that's with sample. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the page here and see if there's anything interesting. But I think we've pretty much covered it all. I mean, there is some um, random shuffle stuff. Um, that uh, we'll get into maybe. And then of course we have the ranges version, which we've uh, yet to talk about ranges, but will uh, so make sure you subscribe for that. Alrighty, but as always, you can find this lesson and more on my site, courses.mshot.io. You can track your progress here on the C++ uh, series here. Um, and again, uh, for folks who are wanting to see like, hey, did I watch all the algorithms videos? Again, that could be a way to just kind of check things off um, as you need. Uh, and, and it's also sort of nice if you're watching this video and I refer back to iterators. If you go back to our iterator lessons, you can kind of check those off if you feel like you're missing some prerequisite. So anyways, folks, with that said, thanks for your time and attention. As always, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have questions, other use cases of how you've used sample before, let us know. And I'll look forward to seeing your discussion below. All right. See you next time.